Hi and welcome to this full course on car rendering where you will learn how to render this realistic car completely from scratch. So in this very first part we will discuss all the HDRI essentials, discover how to differentiate different HDRI qualities and then learn how to fix and edit our HDRI for a nice result. Let's first take a short look on the final result that you will be able to achieve at the end of this course and the whole course will be separated in several parts so subscribe to not miss out on any of the upcoming parts. Additionally on my Patreon you will be able to find some exclusive bonus lessons that go more into detail so if you're interested in that check this out. We're going to be using 3ds Max and V-Ray in the latest version 5 for this course but it really doesn't matter which kind of render software you're using because all of those techniques can be applied to any kind of render engine so I promise if you ever wanted to render a realistic looking car and have no idea how to start, this is the course that will definitely be helpful to you. So without further ado, let's just jump right in our software and start with our basic scene setup. So we're going to be starting from a completely empty scene. If you're unsure about how I initialized my V-Ray and 3ds Max settings, there's a video that should pop up right here where you can check this out. So in order to start, we at least need two things. So one would be our 3D model of a car. The other thing would be an HDRI environment that we're going to be using to place our car inside and that's responsible for the lighting and reflections. For both of them, I'm going to be using free available resources that you can find online and the link is in the description below. So this website here, HDRI Haven, has a huge selection of very high quality spherical HDRI so you can find a lot of great HDRIs here and we're going to be using one HDRI from this website. And for the model itself, we're going to be using this amazing website here, wirewheelsclub.com, where you can find a huge selection of very high quality model cars completely for free for you available to download. So you can download this right here. Or if you want to go the extra mile and support them, you can find a version that includes textures and materials on those two links here. But we're going to be using this free available link that only contains the model. So now we can import here our model and our 3D software. I'm just going to be using the OBJ version of this model because this you can import in any kind of 3D software. And the only thing that I had to change was to change here the units because the model or the OBJ was saved out in meters as units. My scene here is set up in centimeters because that's how I prefer to work. So I just need to make sure to convert that so that the scaling of the car is correct. We're going to double check that in a second after we imported here our car model. And then once the import is finished, I will just create here this simple box to just double check my scaling. And now the length here of this box is roughly four meters. And that's also the real length of the car. So just always double check that you're working the correct scale. So your car shouldn't be like three centimeters small or 50 meters big. That kind of makes sense because then you can easily transfer shaders from one car to the next car without having to rebuild the whole shading structure. So now we're gonna try to find a nice HDRI and then also build a simple shading setup to light our car with this. But before we find the HDRI that we're gonna be using for this particular scene here, let's talk a little bit about the different qualities that you can find among HDRIs because the quality of them is not necessarily always the same. So we will start with a lower quality HDRI and I will show you what are the issues with this and how you can fix it. And then you can determine if the HDRI that you are using is of high or of low quality. And for this, I already created here a V-Ray dome light that just has an HDRI as a V-Ray bitmap piped into the light itself and a very standard ground plane. And this one here is the HDRI that I'm using in this dome light. So you can see it's just a very blue sky with a very strong sunlight apparently. But the problem is you can't really judge the quality of the HDRI by looking at it on your monitor because your monitor can't really display the kind of dynamic range that's saved into the picture. So let's now render and see what kind of result we will get. So now once the rendering is started, we can see that there's something odd going on. The whole picture itself looks extremely bluish. There's a very subtle shadow on it here. There seems to be very little light directionality, even though we have this very strong sunlight. So let's move to here, for example, where the sunlight should be coming from. So it should be coming from somewhere over there. But still, we only have this very weak shadow and everything is very bluish. So the reason for that is that the intensity between the sun and the sky is not very far apart. That means our sun is not overpowering in terms of brightness, how it should be, but it kind of has a similar intensity like the sky. And then this way we don't really get a very strong shadow. So let's now check in Photoshop and investigate what we can do in order to fix that. And here in Photoshop, the picture looks the same like how it did in 3ds Max just now, but we can see it has 32 bits per channel. And once you have a picture with 32 bits per channel, 
in Photoshop, you have access to this exposure slider down here, and there you can investigate basically the dynamic range that's saved into this picture in here. So once we go lower with the exposure, and then we zoom into this part here, let's investigate what's going on in here. So first of all, we can see that here, those clouds, they seem to be clamped because they don't show any detail anymore and they just get this unnatural grayish tone in here. And even worse is that the sun seems to be clamped. So if I go lower with the exposure even, I will see that, yeah, all of this stuff here is totally clamped. The data in here is destroyed. And then it seems like somebody painted in an artificial sun here on top, but the size is wrong, the scaling is wrong. Like this, it would create way too soft shadows. And also the intensity is wrong because we still, if we go lower, it disappears extremely fast. And in reality, the sun, the difference in brightness to the sky is extremely high. So the sun should still be visible. Even we have some very low exposure settings, you should still see a little bit of the sun in here. So that's the problem why this HDI doesn't really work correctly in terms of lighting and shading. And now let's try to see what we can do in order to fix it. So in order to do that, we will also paint in the sun in a more correct brightness. So let's go lower here with the exposure and then let's pick, for example, this kind of color tone in here. So we can see it's like this kind of yellowish or warmish color tone. I think that's good, but we need to choose a very different intensity. At the moment, it's only plus five stops. Let's choose, for example, something like 17. And then we can see, now we can paint in here and it still is extremely bright. Even we have this kind of very low exposure here already. So let's paint in this spot here at where the sun is. And now we can see the lower we go, we still will be able to see the sun until the very end. So that's basically how the difference in brightness should be correctly for this HDRI. And then once I save out this one and use it in the rendering, we will get a different result. So now once I start a rendering again, we will see that now the result will be very different. So we have now this warmish sunlight. We have this stronger shadow here, the same way like we would expect them to come from the sun. And these kind of bluish colors, they only appear here in the shadow part. So that's basically how you can kind of roughly fix an HDI. Of course, you should still use a correct HDI because there are still many parts that are clamped in here and I wouldn't recommend to use that, but this one was just an example about how you can investigate if an HDI is of high quality or of low quality because that's gonna be extremely important for the final result of your rendering. So now when it comes to HDRI Haven, we normally don't need to deal with these kind of issues because those HDRIs were all shot in a professional way. So if we check out this one here, for example, we can see that this has a dynamic range of 27 EV, so exposure values. That means 27 different exposures were used to generate this kind of HDRI. And if you have this kind of situation where you have a lot of contrast, so you have, for example, a clear blue sky with a bright sun and very dark shadows, then it's very important to have an HDRI that also has a very high dynamic range. But if you have, for example, an overcast scene, something like this, then it's also fine to have a much lower dynamic range because the brightness in the picture is not so far apart from each other, like for example, the sun and the sky or some shadows. So you will see that normally the cloudy ones, they have a much lower dynamic range and that's also totally fine for those kind of situations. So now we will try to find some picture for our car that we're gonna place our car inside. And because our car is like an Italian style car, I also want to find some Italian style environment. And luckily here in this square category, there's this Piazza San Marco square. And this one has a dynamic range of eight exposure values, which is medium. But in this case, it's also totally fine because the sun is actually here behind the building. So we don't really have the direct sun and then this exposure range is totally fine for our condition. And now let's download this HDRI here in 16K and check out what we have to do in Photoshop in order to make it usable in our scene. So now once we open the HDRI here in Photoshop, there's this exposure slider again. We can dial through different exposures. We can see everything behaves really nice. We don't have these clamped out parts. We don't have some grayish area. We have colors that are revealing themselves once we go lower in exposure. So that's all like how it should be. And if we zoom in here and check all of this part out here, 
you can see that there's really a lot of detail, no clamp parts. So always check out like the brightest part of your HDRIs if there's any clamping, like in the example that I showed you before. And in most uh, situations from HDRI Haven, you have a really perfect result. And also because it's shot in 16K, we have really a ton of resolution to work with. So now we'll try to investigate like what kind of parts need some fixing. And because we're using the HDRI here for our environment, and we're also gonna really see the HDRI. So I'm gonna project this HDRI on geometry. So everything that is visible here is not only visible in the reflections of our car, but also as a primary visibility. So we need to check like which kind of parts we would want to remove and which one we want to keep. So because this HDRI was shot with different exposure values, we have the problem that some of the objects that are moving, they have these kind of ghosting effects. So for example, we have this person here standing in blue and before she was standing here, because there was a little bit of difference between the different exposures that was taken, she moved during this time to over here. This guy climbed up on here and those birds here were walking, of course. So all of those kind of parts, they would need some fixing. And then also additionally, I would clean up some parts that I would deem maybe uh, not so beautiful and so nice, some signs, some trash cans, for example, there's a ton of trash cans here standing around, some advertisement, some uh, like those cleaning people over here, these people walking around here and so on. So all of this kind of stuff we can fix easily in Photoshop. And the easiest way to do that is to use here the lasso tool and then there uh, you cycle out the object that you don't want you press shift f5 and then you can fill it with a content aware fill and then it will just remove all of these parts here so you go through all of those parts here and you remove everything that you think you don't really want you can also use the cloning brush you can also copy parts of the original picture here and copy it over here and so on so i did this already and I did it exactly the same way like I showed you just now. Most of it is just done with a content aware filling function. And then we can see that all of the stuff that maybe is a little bit distracting is kind of removed. All of those advertisements here, uh, everywhere I just went through and removed stuff that I think was kind of distracting. So if you want to have this HDRI that I fixed already, you can find this also on my Patreon. Other than that, you can also use the original one. It's just that, yeah, you will see that yeah, it takes a little bit of effort to clean out all of this parts, but I think it's worth it because it's, yeah, it kind of reveals that it's just like an HDRI and not like a real physical environment. So always spend some time to fix and clean it up a little bit so that you will have a nicer overall result in the end. So now when it comes to actually using the HDRI, there's two different approaches. Approach number one would be to rely on backplates. So here on HDRI Haven, you normally also have a selection of backplates that were shot at the same location like the HDRI itself. And that's what all of those guys here were doing, is that they rely on the backplate to just put a camera that follows kind of the same perspective lines that what we see in the backplate and then you place your car inside here. Like this you can get a very nice high quality result because normally your backplate has very high resolution, is distortion free and so on. So that's quite good. But the disadvantage is that you can't really move your camera around, you can't do any animations, you can't freely check out different angles from the car. So the approach that I normally try to do is to put the car in the real environment using the HDRI itself. And then you have the advantage that you can kind of move around freely. You can even go to the top, you can go to the front. You can go to all kind of different angles here. You can see the car from all kind of directions and you don't need to spend time to color match the backplate to the HDRI itself because that's sometimes a big of an issue that the reflections or the color from the HDI, they don't really fit like the colors of your backplate. And then you would need to spend some time to kind of bring both of them together. So with this approach, that's the approach that I normally prefer to do if it's possible. It also has certain kind of disadvantages that you might end up having some kind of distortions, but depending on the HDI that you have, those distortions can be minimized. And I think in this kind of environment here where we have this vast open square, it kind of works really good in our favor. So all of these kind of things we're gonna be discussing in the next part. We will recreate this kind of environment in here where we're gonna project our HDI on geometry so that we can really place our car inside here. And then we're also gonna be discussing some tone mapping techniques to get a photorealistic result. So all of these things you can check out in part number two. And then in the parts that are following up, we will discussing all the shaders. So we will go through how to create like this car paint, how to 
create every material in here. So be sure to subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell to find out more about these kind of things once they are released. So until then, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you and take care. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.